Doug Tozier coming to you from the Desert Oasis. Yep, up, here I am. I'm in the Desert Oasis. Just hiding from you a little bit behind my broccoli plants that are not producing any broccoli. But uh, I actually want to talk to you about tomatoes today because uh, we are here in December harvesting tomatoes. So that's the cool thing about living in the desert is that we can uh, we can grow almost year-round here and actually there are some plants that we can do so I just want you to come in here and see because I am actually um, I've got some where do those tomatoes go I've got some tomatoes that are getting right oh look at that there's one these are my yellow pear tomatoes these in my opinion are about the best tasting oh, I dropped one these are about the best tasting tomatoes in the world and I have my own fresh supply of tomatoes and, and it's okay if they're a little bit green some of them might be just a little bit green but look at some I mean I, I've got tons and tons of tomatoes here I'm gonna be harvesting as long as it doesn't freeze which I'm hoping it won't this month, but I'm going to be harvesting probably through Christmas um, these these tomatoes. I'm going to pick a few more while I'm in here. Oh, there's one. Get a few more of these. And I mean, these things, these are good right off the vine. I mean, I, hmm, those are good. Don't need any leaves. Those are good tomatoes, and um, they're good in salads. Um, you can. You can uh, make a lot of different things out of them, but um, I'm going to have to go on the other side because I can't quite reach the uh, tomatoes I want to get to. So I'm going to go over here. Sorry for turning my back on you. And, uh, whoops, don't step on the tomatoes. That's not good for them. Um, let's see if I can get in here and get some more of these. This is good stuff. That one's a little, just a tiny bit on the green side, but that's okay. Pick a, that one there. I'll tell you what. And you know what? Some of these will split a little bit. Uh, I think it's from too much moisture, but because we had a real big rain here uh, a couple weeks ago. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. That one will eat just as good as the others. Get out of here. This is my garden. Um... And, uh, yeah, we get a lot of birds around here trying to eat up everything and uh, just got to gotta deal with that. But, I mean, just this is incredible, the amount, of, uh, the amount I'm getting from this. And this, this tomato plant started right here in this cage. And as you can see, the cage was not enough to contain it. So it spilled over and it's grown out. It's growing over here by the wall. It's growing over there on the other side. I mean, it's just going everywhere, and what happens is the, the tomato plant will grow, will produce some tomatoes, and then if you just leave it, it'll come down, and it actually roots in the ground again to provide uh, nutrients for the rest of the vine as it grows out here. And I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of these tomatoes growing here, and I can just, I can just pick these almost every day now as they start to ripen up I see another nice good size that's a good size one right there I like that one got the little bit of the scarring on it but that's okay no big deal and I'm gonna pick I'm gonna probably fill up this um, this little colander of tomatoes and I'm gonna have tomatoes to eat for a week um, and I'll keep picking more and I'll have more tomatoes I want to show you one more thing over here before we um, before we close out, and uh, that's my uh, these are Rutgers tomatoes. Um, they're from the East Coast, more of a hardy type of tomato for uh, colder, wetter climates. But uh, you know they've actually done pretty well. They were late in uh, blooming and everything, and now the tomatoes are uh, are coming on the vine really nice. And I've got a bunch of them all over I've got them I've got I just and and those should be pretty good ones I didn't do well with this plant last year but this year it's taken pretty good and I think it's going to um, I think it's going to give us some good tomatoes 
So I'm excited about that. I'd be really, really excited if my broccoli plants would start to produce something because uh, right now um, about all they are is food for Gobi. Um, you remember Gobi, our desert tortoise? He loves the leaves off of the broccoli plant. I, it, I think it's his favorite food. So, um, yeah, so that's all it's good for right now. It's not doing a whole lot for us. Um, I haven't tried that on a salad yet, but I'm not so sure that would be that good. But he seems to like it anyways. And we have, uh, I almost forgot to mention, we have a constant supply of green onion, which I can cut this anytime. There's a nice long one. I can cut that, chop it up. That's good for, um, uh, for flavoring all kinds of, of dishes, especially Italian type of dishes. Um, and I'm hoping for some artichoke. Uh, I've got, I've got this, these artichoke plants that uh, hopefully will form some heads and, and give us something, uh, something to eat there. So, uh, let's see, did I forget anything? Um, <laughs> sweet potatoes, you know about the sweet potatoes. Uh, we planted those uh, in the spring. And uh, they have, you know, they've gone all over the place and hopefully are uh, um, going to give us some good sweet potatoes. Oh, come over here to the patio. I want to show you something. Come on. Come on over. Don't be afraid. You remember my, uh, the plant I was uh, uh, growing? Uh, this is a uh, Cape Honeysuckle. And, uh, and you can see it's got a lot of new growth on it. It just keeps putting out new growth. This thing started as just a small plant, actually not much bigger than this one here. Guess where this one came from? That's right, it came off of this plant. All I did was cut at a joint where you see the leaves coming out. I just cut right below that joint, strip off those leaves, stick it in the dirt with a little bit of uh, a rooting compound that I, that I get at the nursery. And uh, that's the result, a new plant. And I actually have um, one, two, three, four, five, six more of those that I'm uh, working on. And it looks like they're starting to take pretty well, too. So, um, so that's, that's doing really well. I'm, I'm happy with that. I need to trim it some more, which will provide me more plants, which is uh, what we're here for. So I'm really, uh, I'm really excited about where that one's going to go. Oh, did you see the garlic growing in there? I planted some garlic. It's supposed to be good for getting rid of bugs. Uh, I don't know if it's working or not, but then again, I don't see a whole lot of bugs on this, so I guess it is working. So that's it for today. Um, I wanted to get this in because, well, first of all, it's, uh, it's around 70 degrees out here in December. What's today? December 3rd? December 3rd and it's 70 degrees and my garden is growing like gangbusters. Um, I've got tomato plants all over the place. I've got sweet potatoes and all of this going on and I'm in short sleeves and uh, just you know that's about the best part about Arizona is that we have weather like this in December. So when it's 115 degrees in the summertime and I'm complaining about it just you know, know that I'm looking forward to this time of year when it's nice and mild and you know, a little chilly in the morning, but nice in the afternoon. And, um, you know, this is the result. We can, we can grow a lot of stuff here. So, till next time, Desert Oasis. If you live in a desert, you can still grow stuff. Bye.